Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now today is building day on the kit of the week and the kit of the week is of course the Airfix 148 scale Spitfire F17. If you just want to know what you get in the box, maybe you've seen one on an auction site or somewhere else and you just feel like buying one, want to know what you get, there is a box opening video, a companion to this already available. If you've got one in your stash and you just want to know how to put it together, this is very much the video for you. If you like it, of course, please remember, thumbs up down there. That makes a big difference. What also makes a difference is subscribing to the channel. If you haven't done so already, do so through the small button down there and click on the bell logo and that means you'll get notifications of new videos as they arrive. And if you want to say thanks in a more concrete way, you can do it through Super Thanks or through any of the partner programs listed here and in the information box below. So, enough of all of that. Let's get on and build our 148 scale Seafire Mark 17 from Airfix. Right, first thing to do is for me to spray a bit of interior green on some of these parts, um, just so they're a bit easier to do when I put them all together. And off we go with the build then. And the first thing I'm doing is putting this compass mount into the back of the instrument panel. Come on, don't be starting to mess me around already. You've only just begun. There we go. So, yep, that will go in there and I'll paint that up black and see if I can do a little tiny dot of white across it or something like that when I do the um, main instruments. I'm also going to put in the gun sight at the moment uh, because it's only quite small and I will be painting it black anyway in a minute along with the rest of that panel as I just said. Then we have this next part of the frame here and we have the control column stick if you like. You can see there's two uh, pegs, two round pegs there, they go into these two round holes here. Actually fit pretty well. Um, next the rudder bar assembly goes in. Um, these two pistons go through these holes and then the you can see there's little tabs for the two beams to go into. There we go like that. The part needs to be at right angles perpendicular to the base. It's a touch of glue that will be done. Now on the uh, instrument panel all I've done is I've uh, dry brushed it and then I've just used a very 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 fine brush um, and just tiny little dabs of white on the instrument panels to make them look like um, indicators you know like um, needles on a clock or whatever. I have no idea what half of these are doing, so I'm just going to put on just sort of dabs of thing which make them look like they might be instruments. Um, they're not obviously necessarily, but um, yeah, they just just go on. It's all about fooling the, the brain, isn't it? It's all about fooling the vision system into thinking it's seeing stuff that's not there. You you think you should be seeing detail, but you're not. And so your brain kind of just fills in the rest. Also, it's going to be inside a cockpit that you're not necessarily going to see very well, and it's going to be dark, so it doesn't matter so much. Now, what, um, what I normally will also do is I'll put a few dabs of white on, on some of the switches and things, and then later on I can put dabs of other colour on the white gives it a nice brightness again switches and stuff like that they're going to need to be bright to stand out so if you put white underneath them then they, they'll sort of pop up a bit I've no idea what I'm painting here by the way absolutely no idea at all what these are, what they should be, or anything like that. 
I'm just sort of randomly doing things. And I'll put spots of random color on later as well. Um, you know, it's just, just something that makes it look like it could be an aeroplane. So there we, so there we have it. That's the um, instrument panel finished. I mean, it, you know, to me, it looks fine. And once it's inside the plane, it won't matter anyway, because no one will see it pretty much. But it just gives uh, an impression of what an instrument panel should look like, I think. The upper half of the interior is black. Okay, so next there's this control. I'm going to put this in before I do any um, weathering or shading or anything because I want to pick this up as well. These are, I think, things like the uh, throttle, the mixture control, maybe the pitch control, although they're variable pitch propellers. Don't know if you had a pitch control on these. Anyway, there's this sort of trilogy of little things that goes in. It won't focus on them. Come on, focus. There you go. Um, yeah, little trilogy of bits and pieces in there. So I just want to be able to pick those out with white when I do the dry brushing around here. Uh, notice also for I've cut the uh, door out, door panel out, because I'm going to have the door open and there's a separate door panel you use for it. So dry brushing. Now, um, normally on black, I would use maybe a mid gray, something like that, or maybe even a light gray. But because this is a pretty cramped cockpit, and um, it's gonna be difficult to see inside and there's not much light I'm going to use white now I'm using white so sort of pump up the contrast a bit because you really won't see much contrast otherwise um, and also do it on the uh, interior green parts as well um, these I'm gonna have a bit of a detail wash in Detail wash is shadow, and wherever you have shadows, you need highlights. So there we go, it takes two seconds to do that, and already there's quite a lot of detail. And you can see on the other side of the cockpit as well, um, done the same thing. A brush from the top down, top down, so it always picks up the top surfaces because that's where the light's coming in from. Okay, and you can see how it's also um, picked out the these little throttle and mixture controls and stuff like that. And with the panel wash, you can be quite quite aggressive with this um, for two reasons. Firstly, again, it's going to be inside, so you want the contrast to really be pushed up. But secondly, it dries a lot lighter than it looks when you first do it. So be quite confident and quite aggressive with it. You can also go back and wash it off because it is water. all this is water-based. So until you um, actually fix it in with anything with varnish or whatever, even if you're going to, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to varnish the inside, but some people do, you know, nothing's going to change until it's fixed with something. So you can just go back and loosen it down or indeed go back over it again and give it a real punch of contrast whichever you like now the last piece of construction I need to do is to put the rudder assembly onto the instrument panel assembly like so and again it needs to sit perpendicular so that these ribs either side are parallel the seat is mostly interior green, the base is black, and the back is this leather colour. Now, when I was making a, an Edward Spitfire, I think it was a while back, they suggested this colour, which is called Cavalry Brown, made by Vallejo. It's a sort of, slightly sort of reddish leather colour. I think it looks really nice, actually. So that's what I'm going to use here. I'm going to assume that Edward was right. 
and I'm going to assume that Supermarine used it all through their production rather than changing suppliers halfway through. So I'm going to assume this is the right colour for the seat. Okay, next I'm doing the seat and there's this adjustment handle that needs to go on the side. And the seat sits on this support, which I guess might be armour plate. And then that goes onto this structure on the rib. Slides up into place, that's sat in place, that's set there, and there we go. The seat is on its supporting structure. And because um, in this for, in this kit they only have straps when the pilot's in, they don't have straps when the pilot isn't there because of course the straps go up here. So what I'm going to do is put in some straps. Now I'm making these just from sort of strips of uh, masking tape. You go up there. What I do need are a. What I do need is some more pointy tweezers. And B. I also need a tiny, tiny, tiny pair of scissors. So I'll snip these off. Instead, I'll just use the craft knife to nip the edge ends off. But um, you know, it's a really easy. <laughs> so really easy making it look a right mess. It's a very easy way to put in straps and you, know, you just paint them up when you're done. Doesn't take too long, just a few strips of masking tape. Cut them up carefully. You can make little buckles, make extra uh, dangly bits of bits in the buckle. You can put, make a little pad, a little black thing for the quick release and um, just paint it up and it will look grand. So there we go, painted up, um, painted the buckles, painted the the quick release box, gave them some buckles at the ends. Just not bad, it's all right, it will do for me. Um, it's it's just, just a suggestion to go into the cockpit really, it's not gonna be the world's best, but it's just a suggestion for the cockpit, so it's not completely empty. All right, okay, some assembly now and the instrument panel and rudder bar assembly go into the front of the cockpit like this and that side piece of where the, the thing that supports the rudder bit bar that goes in nicely here you can see it that joins that line up for that rib now there is another piece that goes in across that so there's this one last piece that goes in. It kind of goes across the end of the rib and across this stringer here in the fuselage as well. It's quite a tricky little fit. You can't put it in before you put this rib in though, so it's a pain in the backside, but there we go. Ah, uh, oh, there you go. That feels about right there. Okay. And they suggest putting the back of the cockpit area onto the other side it just sort of slots in against the stringer and up against the back of the fuselage opening there the canopy opening like so now if you want the propeller to be able to rotate freely on your kit what you need to do now is make the propeller assembly and put the axle drive through here um, with the spinner and the propeller and all that because then these two halves will join together it will trap the um, axle between here but it will be able to rotate freely because you're not going to put any glue in here you'll put glue up here and up here but not in that part there I'm not going to be doing that so I will worry about the propeller another time and I will though glue the two halves together now so I'm just going to start by connecting some of these pins at the bottom together. It's really, really, really tight here. There we go. 
almost there. Right, so those should line up now. Those should line up now. And that should be everything lined up. So what we'll do now is tape it all together and uh, splash a little bit of extra thin cement along the join marks. One thing I should point out here is that um, there's a part here that doesn't join up because it's like a runner for the canopy. So be very careful how you join all those together. You can also, of course, double check by going in underneath that everything's lined up like this back. Um, back part isn't lined up properly. So just open it up a bit, give it a bit of a shove that way. So it does line up properly. There we go. That's better. See, they're all lined up, all nice and straight. Just tweak this just a little bit. Yeah, that's all good. That is all good. There we go. So that's the cockpit done. We'll join the two fuselage halves together and then go and have a well-deserved cup of coffee. Right, we're going to start on the wings now. And before we go anywhere, the underside, we've got to make some decisions. Now, firstly, if we're having the fuel tank, then we need to drill out some of these holes. I think these two here, these two here, uh, with 1.5 mil drill bits. If we're having the stand, then there's two mil holes here we need to be drilling out instead. Um, depending on, I guess it depends on whether or not you've got the, the fuel tank, whether you do these two or these two, I don't know. But if you're doing the fuel tank, you definitely need these two. And also on the underside of the wings, the lower section of the wings, if you're having rockets, then you'll need these four here out. And those are 1.2 mil holes. And if you're having the wing slipper tanks, you need these three holes, these 1.3 millimeter holes. These days, they do tend to sort of get all the holes the same size so the standard two mil everything else would be roughly the same so but these are 1.2 these are 1.3 and these are 1.5 millimeters each next we're going to put the identification lights in uh, it's like a single piece that slips in here you will notice that these two are very slightly closer together than these two so it has to go in the right way round like so and when it is in you can just put a tiny drop of ultra thin or extra thin I keep calling it ultra thin why do I keep calling it ultra thin I don't know extra thin cement just a tiny drop of it in one corner and that's it that's all we need to do leave that alone leave it to dry then what we'll do is we'll paint the back. Will we paint the backs, do you think, or will we paint the glass? Maybe we'll paint the front of the glass with the um, transparent paint, and then we'll I'll put silver on the back of this. Don't make much difference. Anyway, we'll just mask it off for when we spray it later. Next on the stub wings, we put the plates here. This is like shows like the interior like the blanking plate for the inner part of the wing fold mechanism. So just make sure that's pushed nicely down into the recess properly. Then the stub wing sections can go into the lower halves and be joined together. Now what I've done is I've just put a dab of glue on the where the pins are so then that just lines me up and holds it in place for a while and then I'll use the extra thin for the rest of the joints and I'll just let that settle down 
I'll just let that settle down with some clamps. So as an aside here, um, I've just briefly given a quick sand over here. The, one of the reasons why I prime kits before assembly is exactly this actually. So that when it comes to um, looking at joints, I can run a bit of sanding over and I can see which side is lower, which side is higher and which side to push the fill it in from if I need filling at all of course. Now here this this sort of round bump here this is the thing I was talking about it's so infuriating that there's not a single piece here. Let's see this panel here and across there. If that came as a panel by itself you can mold in that mold in that have this nicely molded you'd maintain this um, joint line here and then you wouldn't I wouldn't be thinking how on earth am I going to rescue this bit here um, it's not so important down here because that's easy enough to fill and to clean up but cleaning up this filling here and here and down there getting it nice and flat but still maintaining this circle that's going to be such a problem I'm not yet sure how I'm going to go about it um, I'll have to have a think I really don't by the way you can see how the um, cockpits turned out with all the modifications and the detailing and everything else we played with earlier on it's not bad eh? right next job joining the stub wings here so the fuselage that goes in there that clicks on the front there and the whole lot gets joined together it's not a bad fit it's not as snug as perhaps it could be but you know what I'm not too I'm upset with that I think that'll do I think that'll do so while that's setting up I'll work on the outer wings and the first thing to do is on these lower panels here there's just the remnants of some ejector pins here here and here they just need to be sanded out because they will um, stop these ends of the wings coming together properly. Right, so we've got the uh, two halves of the outer wing um, taped together. What I'm going to do now is put in this, which is the insert for the wing folding mechanism. It goes in quite a long way because it has to clear the wheel well there. I will add some extra thin cement along these edges. And also along the edges of the wing here. Before we finish for the night, we can do a few other things. For a start, we can put the exhaust stack in on either side glorious engine the Rolls Royce Griffin and we can also add the head covers then there's the bottom cover of the engine compartment next I'll glue the two halves of the carburetor air intake together then the carb air intake can go underneath the chin like so and we'll smooth out that line in a minute the horizontal stabilizers can go in as well now normally I wouldn't bother doing these just yet I'd leave it until I've after I spray I could spray the undersides off them but there's and there's quite a lot of it and um, you know the elevators have to go in and the rudder has to go in there's a post to hold them all in so I thought I'd do it all in one now and just mask off in the usual way later on then the elevators can go in now they can go in either way around however the 
actuators so the trim tabs here here should be on the top next there's this um, small retaining post that goes in seems to remember from one of the other spitfires this was a real pain in the backside to do for some reason because it wouldn't go in that was the reason that was exactly the reason it will not oh dear goodness it's really difficult to get it to go and sit in properly See, the problem is it has to go in after the elevators, but it's too big for the gap in the elevators. Which seems a little bit daft to me. Why do I know? Ah, there we go. It takes a bit of shoving to get that into place. It's not a good fit at all. Um, messes up other things you've been trying to do okay. anyway it's in there now just have to maybe, maybe just shave a tiny bit off of it but you know, I couldn't be bothered and it did go in eventually the rudder can go on now that's a um, big old rudder to help uh, counteract the enormous enormous torque of that big propeller and also the hook can go in in its stowed position oops that goes down like that that goes up like that there you go so the hook sits there the rudder sits there everyone i hope is happy if the wheels first thing I've done is I've um, sanded off the mold marks and then I'm going to pop in the four spoke hubs like this of course I'm using the weighted wheels because my aircraft will have its undercarriage down the ailerons can fit in Maintaining that gloriously elliptical wing. The flaps can go in as well. Now, if you're having the aircraft um, with the wings down, you can have the flaps set, of course. I think it's 35 degrees or something like that that they sit at. Um, but they've got little tabs to sit them at the right angle. Um, I'm having the wings folded, therefore, I'm having the flaps retracted. It's the same on the inboard sections as well. There's two segments of flap need to go into place as well. While I'm at it, I might as well put the uh, 20 mil can barrels into place as well another job to do is to paint the tires I'm painting them a dark rubber color I think we've made excellent progress today um, I think I'll call it a night though and come back tomorrow and in all likelihood finish this off um, I'll see you tomorrow morning Right, welcome back. Hope you had a good night's rest. Let's get on with our sea fire now. The first thing I'm going to do today is I'm I'm going to put the uh, windshield on before I start spraying the aircraft. So I've got to put in this extra armoured piece in here. It's a little fiddly, but it goes in around there. And I've just used some very very tiny dabs of um, clear adhesive clear PVA, canopy glue, call it what you will, 
everyone sells them. Um, mine's, mine thing is, mine's called Clearfix or something. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, the, the sort of glue you use to glue in cannabis. It's a PVA glue, it's water-based glue. So it doesn't do any horrible chemical crazing and it doesn't spread that far. And of course it goes transparent when it dries. So it's all round a good thing to do. You'll notice I've also put some masking tape on. I did that very first thing. Just laid a few bits of um, masking tape on. Use a very sharp scalpel blade to go round the edges and cut them out. It's, it's close. It's not absolutely accurate, but it's close enough for me. Um, and it saves seven or eight quid on buying a canopy mask. Okay, now we've got the um, mask done. I've just painted a little bit of black on the inside there because that's going to show through the canopy. And we'll place the canopy again. I've used some of that um, water-based acrylic PVA type glue. Just set that down. The good thing is, it as I say, it dries clear. It won't craze or it cause any chemical hazing of the part. And also, it is actually quite an efficient filler. So if there are any gaps, um, it will fill them up and we won't notice them. So, that's that. What else can we do? Let's have a look and see what else we can do whilst we're waiting for that to dry. And then we can start masking and spraying. Another thing I can do is put these uh, little struts on the oleos. The compression struts on the oleos. I've taken them off of the main sprue but I've kept them on their little part so that I can see the numbers 48 and 49 still. Um, so I know which way round they go when it comes to installing them. But wouldn't like to have this job to do if it were on the model already. Now on the other leg, unfortunately, broke the part when I was taking it off the sprue, even though I was super careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the two ends on here and then I'll just um, give them a bit of extra thin to join them up when they're in position. They will need a little bit of messing around to get in the right place though. So there we go, both pieces are on and I'll just dab a bit of extra thin between them and that will secure them. Right, so now everything's masked up, I'm gonna give it a quick coat of um, primer just so I can double check the joints and also then I can lay down the first top cut well I can, I'll lay down the bottom color first obviously then when you're ready you can start on the underside and for this you'll need sky type s Then once we've done some masking, um, pretty straightforward masking it has to be said, then we can start with the top coat of extra dark sea grey. So there we have the top coat done of extra dark sea grey. I've taken off all the um, masking. And now when it's set on properly, I'm gonna give it a coat of satin varnish and then I'll start on the decals. On to the decals then and I'm going to start on these folded wing sections. I've just put in this first um, no walk line because that really kind of helps set the position of the next decal which is of course the principal one here, the roundel. Um, just give it a bit of wash there with some 
decal solution. I'm using Microset today. And we'll just get our decal, decal, whatever you call it, transfer back in the day. And we plop that on. Now, this is going to be interesting to um, get this in the right position. Okay, so the white bar just goes just above the line of... Uh, of course, it's going to touch the bottom. Silly me. There. So, silly me, I forgot. What, what it's going to do is it's going to line up against the edge of this um, no-walk limit line there. And the other edge has to just touch the back edge of the wing here where the aileron is. It can't go onto the aileron. So that kind of sets the position nicely. Okay. Let the um, setting solution do its magic and continue with some of the other pieces. Something that would not happen these days, I hope at least. Um, I would hope nowadays that they have people who test build these things in the various configurations and this wouldn't be an issue. Here we have the decal, decal, whatever you like, it's kind of tomato, tomato. The thing that goes on the uh, top of the wing, the no step thing, only walk forward of this line things, da 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 da. That's got to go across between the uh, roundel and between the um, main fuselage, which is grand, except you can see it has to fit in here and it is that long. These days, that would be cut for you or there'd be a mark to say where to cut it. I'll measure that and cut it and I'll just hope that when the wings are folded, the fold line will just hide up any inaccuracies. But that's actually pretty rubbish that um, that hasn't been dealt with. Okay, that, that was pretty close. I'm, I'm happy enough with that. Now, the next thing I've got to do is put lots of decal softener on here to get this to sit into these um, recesses because it's much, much thicker than the current ones made by um, Cartograph. Cartograph. The mod modern decals are much, much thinner than this and take to um, contours very, very easily. These are really quite thick by comparison. So they're going to need some softening with decal sole, micro sole. So what I've done is I've painted the propeller aluminium and I'm going to spray black on top and let that dry for a while. When the decals will dry, and I've added another bit of um, varnish, I'll just chase in some of these panel lines. Two somewhat annoying things here. Uh, the line of the upper fold in the wing is right through here, right through this roundel. And yet there's nothing, again, in the instructions or in the decal sheet or anything to say this is where you cut if you're going to have the folded wings. Um, so you, you have to cut it yourself. I, I've cut mine right, right to the edge of this white part of the roundel here for both ends. So you just have this tiny little half moon here which goes on the underside and this on the underside at the top. That's the exposed side, remember, when the wings are folded which is annoying. Second thing is, um, I'm hoping this is SX358, because that's what it says there. However, it says SX328 there, because they got the five and the two the wrong way up. Fortunately, on the decal sheet, everything's fine. But, really, quite amazing. Anyway, let's get on. 
underneath the plate now first thing i'm going to do for the moment is just paint in these lights from the front they are red green and yellow these are signaling lights okay so for the radiator bodies the radiator faces go in quite simply slot in you see that there's like a cutout the cutout needs to be at the top um there we go and then when that's done the radiator body can just slot into position under the wing just do the same for the other side then on each side under here we have the hooks for the catapult or the accelerator um, in that memory they weren't terribly effective most of the time um, in fact oh, it's one one ship that went to i think korea basically hadn't used their catapult for about two years previously because they just didn't need to they weren't operating at maximum all up weights they weren't operating in dead calm conditions or where the ship couldn't steam for some reason at full speed they were like quite happily trolling down the length of the deck and taking off then suddenly they were at high all up weight with the crowded decks and they needed the accelerators and the catapult whatever you like to call it to work and um quite quite often they just didn't which was um a bit awful uh they there's what one reason why they introduced the, the rocket assistance on the um 47 Spitfire 47, they almost, they had rocket assistance quite regularly to get off the ground for combat missions in Korea. Anyway, um, that's, I think, apart from one or two little bits, the fuselage done, the wings are done, everything's done basically, but it all needs to be assembled like the Avengers. So I'll get on with assembly next. Let's well, doing the propeller. Um, first is this four part of the axle, it's got a tab on it, you can see that ridge, that's the tab there, just pushes all the way through the propeller. There we go. And then it then goes into the back plate as well. then the spinner sits on top of the whole thing. And here on the cockpit area, I've put in the this so single piece things like a support for the rear headrest. And of course I've put the cockpit door on as well. I'll just touch those up with a bit of paint. So onto the undercarriage, the trickiest bit of a sea fire or spitfire normally right so we have a peg at the end of the undercarriage leg and there's a hole in there into which it goes hopefully okay there we are it's actually quite a firm fit now important things um to double check you've got it the right way around firstly the oleo um strut hinge here points forward and the wheel axle points outwards if you've got that right and the, the wheel the uh, leg generally sits quite forward if you've got those right leg forward oleo knee forward and axle outwards then you're in the right side And the undercarriage doors go on the uh, fits the leg. There's this a tab here. You can just see a tab here. That fits into a slot on the undercarriage leg. The leg pops in there first and then against that slot. Like that. 
And while I'm dealing with wheels, I might as well put in a tail wheel. That slots in all the way to the front there. And there's a couple of doors that need to go on as well. Right, for these doors, the, um, the instructions just seem to imply you just shove them in. You know, uh, it doesn't say one before the other or anything like that. Just says, in they go. And that's not the way it works. Um, this this part here needs to slot over the top of this part here. And then there's a peg in the middle it forms. That's peg here it forms. And that's what actually slots into the fuselage. Now, that means if you put this one in first, you can't put that one in afterwards because it, it goes underneath it. So that's the first proper failing in the instructions that I think I've seen for a while. Anyway, that's what the unit looks like. That, let that dry and let that go in as a unit. All right, so you see where the peg goes. Sort them underneath the wheel and into the hole. Now what we need to do is put the main wheels on and they just go on here. Now these are weighted, okay, so there's a flat spot where they sit. It's not got a shaped um, wheel axle, so get it roughly right first. Just sort of line it up visually, if you will, first. And then when the glue's just started to set, you can put it on. Then the propeller assembly can go onto the aircraft. Also, before I forget any longer, I'll just paint the exhaust stubs here. I'm using a burnt iron for this. I might might add just a little tiny bit of like rusty sort of burn as well, but not not too much because I think I think this is a you know, relatively new aircraft. And the last thing on the underside for a folded wing aircraft is this. This is a a frame that prevents the tail wheel getting snagged on the arrestor wires when you're landing. Because that wouldn't look good. And under the port wing is a pitot tube that needs to go in. The canopy can go on in the open position, sitting on the rails nicely. And now the wing folding. So the, the shorter of the two ends of the folding lock go into the fuselage, like so. Then the wing sits into the hinge mechanism like this and then leans over until the upper ball fits in like so. Leave that alone to dry. And so the final job is just fitting the upper wing segments into the slots provided and they sit horizontally like that. And so there we have it, the Seafire F-17 in 148th scale from Airfix. It went together very well. Uh, no major problems that I could see. Nothing stuck out saying, oh my God, I wish he hadn't done it that way. Pretty much everything went together as it said it would in the instructions. And with a bit of detailing, a bit of work in the cockpit, adding some straps and things like that. I think it makes a very, very creditable kit. The wing fold was easy enough, although maybe they should have a, a few more secure tabs, a bit like with the Sea Fury. But then, of course, they've got bracing struts, safety struts on here, so maybe they don't need it. I don't know. Other than that, there really is very little. Oh, the other thing, of course, as I mentioned before, was the small filler cap that's in front, just in front of the cockpit, right on the seam. In the end, I just painted the circle where it, where it was and it looks okay from a distance. So I'm happy enough with that. 
there we go if you're thinking of buying one i would say absolutely go for it if you're thinking of doing the wing fold i'd also say go for it it really isn't that complicated and it really isn't that difficult to do um, lovely kit make of it as much you can spend more time weathering and chipping and greasing and all the rest of your, your things if you want i'm happy with this as a sort of just been delivered model there we have it relatively free of drama which is nice for once so um if you've enjoyed the show please remember thumbs up on the button down there on the like button and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel through the little logo down there in the bottom right both of those help enormously and don't cost you a penny in any case I hope to see you next time. Take care until then, and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>